born May 1990 in small city of East Bosnia Vlasenca, okay. just about 30,000 population. Okay. Then suddenly, the uh, two years after war started, I've been in concentration camp as a third person, as a kid inside, spent four months. In concentration camp? Yes. How, how old were you then? Two years. Two years? I, I was exactly two years. We've been there four months with my mother and sister and 3,000 other people. And then we escaped to Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia. Suddenly I never again see my father and we don't have even his grave and body. We never found his body, he's just, he's dead but he's lost somewhere in the forest in Bosnia. Okay. So 96 January move, we uh, moved to Sarajevo capital and I lived there all the way to end of 2011 when I actually moved to Sweden. So how old were you when your father died? Two years old. Two years old? Yeah. And that was the last time you saw him, of course. I don't remember him because I was very... I just have four pictures. Okay. And uh, how did you get out of the concentration? It's actually two brothers, you know, Serbian soldiers. One prisoner us, one lock us inside, another one help us to get out. Okay. And they are actually twins. You can see how people can be different. Yeah. Different. So we just, you know, he helped us to go. Time to time they, you know, they release people from, they cannot kill no. anybody, no. everybody. So this is how we get out. Okay. So when you moved to Sarajevo, yeah. um, how old were you then? Six years, Six. five and a half. Five and a half, yeah. okay. So you went to school in Sarajevo? Yes. Okay. I changed many schools because I moved around that we didn't have our own apartment, you know. Mm -hmm. We live where it's cheaper rent. So when my, when my mother found some cheaper place, we moved there. So I need to change school. This was very tough for a kid, you know, around 10 years old. So I'm adapted to moving around and so on, you know. I'm thinking about today, I mean, you're, you're here now in Sweden and you have, uh, as far as we can, I mean, we don't know each other so well, yeah. but the, the thing that I picked up on you is that you're, you're a real hard worker, you were honest, and you're very, um, humble. Thank you. And how much do you think that your background has influenced the way that you are today? Are probably you... a lot. Probably a lot. You know, I, I were only men in my house. You know, I have a mother and sister. Yeah. So about 16 years old, I start to work okay. on the doors. You know, to survive somehow. So I think it, it takes a lot. As a bouncer. Yes. Yes. Yeah. This is also how I met my wife. Yeah. At 2011. You told us. Yes. Uh, were you a big guy at the time? I would, yes, a little bit bigger than my friends, you know. I started with gym when I was 16, okay. and I grow very f fast. Mm -hmm. When I started, I was just 70 kilograms body weight. 70? Yes. But I grow very, very fast and get stronger fast. So, yeah, I was a little bit bigger and stronger than my other friends from school. And, and at that time, you, you trained to be, to be beefy. As, a, as, a, as everybody else, I did bench and, and biceps, you know, <laughs> most. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not, no squats, no, no, no. deadlift. No. No. And, uh, and uh, you, you mentioned the, the, how you met your wife. I yes. Mean, at one point of time, she came to your, yes. your, your nightclub. Yes. And you didn't uh, want her to stay there. You, exactly. you wanted to throw her out. She came with her brother, you know, and they, they parked car, you know. A little bit cocky way, you know, they have a nice car that came from Sweden down, you know, and I worked for 25 euros whole night fighting with people, you know, and I was very jealous. <laughs> I can say like that, you know, and then I said to my friend, they don't come again. These two, they don't come again. And then our boss, you know, they let, let them in and the boss decided, what can I do, you know. But I just was waiting for small movement so I can throw them out. <laughs> Somebody break the glass from the table and that was... <laughs> we're going out. Get out. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, but you uh, something happened there because you you uh, you wanted to yes. get over again. Yes. No, I actually had a request, a Facebook request for friendship, you know. Okay. And then she told me, like, wow, first you're kicking me out, now you're adding me on Facebook. But I really don't didn't remember, you know, I was young, okay. and I had I was adding all girls around, you know. <laughs> So I just saw a nice picture, you know, black long hair and some roses on the picture. I had her and I said, sorry, I don't remember. She said to me, don't play stupid. Of course you remember, kick me out. 
<laughs> and this is uh, how all you can together. never forget me. Yeah. What you met, you can never forget me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then we talk a lot, you know, talk, talk, talk. Then she came down, so we meet again live. She spent down maybe two weeks. And she said, you can maybe come to Sweden. And I didn't really want to come, you know, so people say maybe I move to Sweden because of better life, not because of wife. She said, yes, but, you know, if you look realistically, it is, there is better life and, you know, for your training, it's going to be better and everything. So I came here and I wanted to stay one week just to feel how it's here, you know, and I I stayed three months. At that point, have you, have, had you started the Strongman? Uh, no. Uh, no, no, just, just weightlifting. Yeah, I started Strongman April 2012. Okay. Yeah, training okay. for Strongman, yeah. but my first competition were 2016. Okay. Yes. So you stayed three months? Three months, yes. Yeah. Then I go, because we are we are not in Europe Union and we are allowed to stay in Europe Union in three months. Yeah. Then you need to go back three months. Okay. So I did a lit this all the time, yeah. all the way up until 2015, I think, when I get mm -hmm. yeah. permission to live and work in Sweden. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and then you, how, how did you come up with the idea to, to start to Strongman? Actually, that happened in Bosnia when I was on, on vacation. One Bosnian guy who who competed for Denmark a long time, Jasmin Hadarovic, he moved back in Bosnia and he opened a chain of gyms. And he was huge, you know. We didn't say, what, what did he train? He's not like a regular bodybuilder. He was a little bit, you know, too big for him. Yeah? Then he's playing with strongman. I didn't know what is strongman. He showed us some videos, you know, and then ah, I know I see this on Eurosport, you know. People pulling trucks, lifting stones, and so on. Then he showed us this, you know, we started to train a little bit. Then he said to me, you you are, you are, can be the one, you know, I think you are good, you know. Uh, then I trained maybe with him, not a short period, maybe one, two months. I moved to Sweden and he said, even better there. It's going to be good there, just continue, focus and work, you know. Yeah. Then I came here, I trained, I continued to train normal training because I trained in a normal gym. Then I met my two friends, Omar and Adam. Omar was very, very strong. You know, I, when I saw him doing these triceps extensions, you know, he was so aggressive doing this, you know, he has huge arms and I said, what the hell is this, you know, what, what is this, you know? I, I knew one Peter guy, you know. Yeah. I said, Peter, who is that? He said, this is my friend Omar. I said, what the hell is that? Look at his arms, you know. Can I meet with him? Perhaps we can train together. Yeah. I said, yes, no problem. Then we met together, you know, we started to train together and he was much stronger than me. I, my goal was, it was to catch him up, you know, yeah. and became stronger as Omar, you know. Yeah. Then I met Ada, my other friend, yes. and he said just, you know, that's pure strength, my friend, What you are very strong, you, you should, you know, update that somehow. I said, yeah, but you know, I, I, I train a little bit strongman, but this is normal, Jim, how I can do it? Then he said, in this gym with one guy, Kalle Lane, he's, yes. you know, Swedish yeah. strongman legend. Then, then he connected in, with him. This is how it all started. Yeah. So how was your first meeting with Kalle? He actually moved in Malmö, then he come, he moved here to Stockholm after me. Yeah. I met him, I saw this like, big, you know, guy with long hair, yeah. tattoos. Yeah. It looks really dangerous. Yes, like yes, big, yes, yeah. motorcycle, you know. Yeah this leather jacket yeah. all the time. Hey. It was nice, but you know, he's the nicest guy now when I know him, but yeah. of course, it was a little bit, you know. Yeah, it's a bit scary. He's <laughs> yeah, a big guy. Yes. Um, I mean, you, you, you're you also a kind of person that really wants to have uh, happy people around you. Sure. And you, you contribute to, to have happy people around you because yeah. you are really, Keen, you're very, uh, you're very motivated to to have the people around you happy, yes. and you you're a very um, um, empathetic. Um, Thank you. I mean, I, I, where did that where, where where does that come from? I mean, I don't know. It's just like this. Maybe I'm such a person, you know. It's yeah. just better atmosphere, you know. When everybody's, I like to train. When I train, it's always around me at least three, four friends, you know. Yeah, you're never alone. No, and you know, as much as I focus on me, I, this much focus I pay for them. Yeah. I pay my attention when they're lifting. Yeah. Even if they don't compete, you know? It's so funny because when we met 
uh, last time, yeah. uh, you even gave me some advice of yeah. my deadlift, which is really generous. Why not? Really you know, generous. Whoever wants to work hard, you know, I support. Yeah. And if I can help, it's even better. You're now preparing for uh, for uh, the deadlift competition on Wembley. Yeah. At the beginning of July. Um, and obviously, deadlift is your, your strong yeah. strongest uh, movement. Yes. When did you realize that you had a, a, an advantage in, in deadlift? I actually trained deadlift just three years, you know. Yeah. Didn't train before, but I was always good in squat, so squat keeps your deadlift strong. And then I did some deadlifts, and one, one of my friends said, I think you are actually can be better in deadlift than squat. And then I trained with this, my friend I mentioned, Omar. We trained, 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 and my goal was to pull 300. And I pulled 300 just some weeks after. On the Lake of Stiff Bar, we buy, we bought. How much did you have? Did you put what's your maximum before that? I don't really know max because we did some sets, you know, maybe 240, 220, I don't remember. But 300 came very fast. And then uh, then some months after 350 I lift. 350? Yes. <laughs> it, I claim That's up. That's progression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very fast, you know. And then I said, but I didn't have any social media in that time. Then I, you know, I had Facebook first, then later Instagram. But on Facebook I saw one day a Stolberg, you know, he was preparing for some competition. And he lift 382 kilograms in suit and he said when he lift he was so aggressive he threw his uh, straps you know away and he said something but I didn't know what he said I ran in gym to Omar and I said can you please translate this guy he just smashed 382 what did he say you know and Omar said that he said what kind of joke is this what the fuck is this sorry for my words you know like it was too too light give me more weight you know I said he said this after 382 he said yeah I said to Omar I have to be, I have to beat this guy in deadlift. I have to be stronger than him, you know. Omar said, go for that. But then, you know, Andreas is, yeah. you know, powerhouse. Yeah, he's a powerhouse. Yes, I said, man, he's very good, but I, you know, he don't have what I have, you know. <laughs> I, I'm more crazy than him, I'm gonna lift more, you know. <laughs> now we are very, very good friends, yeah. you know. But the, he actually was my wind in back. Yeah. I wanted to beat him, you know. Yeah. And on the the, uh, the finals of the Swedish Strongest Man in um, 18, you pulled 4.22 and a half. Yeah. I pulled 4.22 and a half in 40 went stiff bar and event before I hurt my back in the yoke. This also take a lot of power. Because I didn't not, didn't go with the full aggression I have, you know. I, I was a little bit careful, you know. And when you go over 400, you can't be careful and lift, you know. You need to lift with your life, you know, yeah. if you want to get this up. So I think that day I was ready for 450, you know. Yeah. If it was uh, that lift bar in first event, I think 450. Because I did in gym 422 and half. I did two reps for two sets. And so four lifts. Yeah, all four lifts, they was without hitch, you know. They yeah. were clean lifts. So I think I, back then I had 450. Yeah, when you look at that lift, uh, you can clearly see that your that was not your maximum. Yeah, it was more in the tank. That was you had plenty more. I would say like 15 kilos there at that day. There. Yeah, even in 40 event you mean. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's yeah, 435, 440. Kilos. Yeah. Um, if you lift with your life on the line. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like I'm gonna do in Wembley. You know? Yeah. Now you're you're invited to to participate on this. Uh, that yes. Lift in Wembley. Yeah. Um, I mean, guys are aiming for 501. Yes. Because that will be the new world record. And yeah. the one that does that will receive an additional $50,000 in, in bonus. Yes. Uh, $50,000 is like half a million Swedish crowns. Exactly. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Plus it's 15,000. Can you buy a bigger couch? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, you know who win all competition is $15,000? Yeah. And who won deadlift without record at seven thousand? So you basically can win seventy-two thousand dollars if you win everything that day. Are you just doing the deadlift competition, or are you doing the whole event? I think only deadlift okay. because I invited like special guests for deadlift. Okay. Okay. My coach said 
he knows Colin he said he might change when he see you there you know you are a guy from Europe maybe he give you a chance for whole competition but as I know for now it's just that lift and that's your main goal yeah yeah, yeah. that's your own goal you know it's gonna be first event it's gonna be a deadlift bar I'm heavier than ever now I'm, I, I feel very strong I don't have injuries I think it's gonna be good how much do you weigh now? Right now, 161, 162. And on when do you think? I will try to push to 165. 165. If I don't, this is also enough to be super strong because yeah. I lifted last year in preparation, I lift 430 on stiff bar with 153 body weight. Yeah. Would you say that 165 is your optimal weight? Yeah, this, this is like max, you know. Nice. I think everything over, a little bit struggle with appetite. I, I don't think I can gain more this year than that, you know. And also, it's not smart to gain more than maybe five kilograms for yeah. one year, you know. Yeah. Uh, I was 160 last year yeah. at one mo moment, you know. So if I go this year, 164, 165, it's very good. Do you notice that your technique changes when you yes. go when you gain weight? Yes. You know, people think just gain and you're going to be stronger, you know. Yeah. But actually, you know, it's harder to reach bar. It's, you know, it's harder to put your elbows on the place between legs and then pull your, you know, your shoulders back. It's it's a little bit harder, you know, you're losing a little bit technique, so you need to work on that also. How often do you train with your suit? Not often, I just do maybe two, three times before show, just to feel it, you know. I mean, this, this, uh, this uh, training regimen you're on now, aiming for Wembley, yeah. in early July. Um, what, can you tell us about that training routine? Yes, I, I basically train everything once a week and I don't want to stop or do less on other things, you know, I'm doing everything because I have more competitions after Wembley. Yeah. Of course, now main focus is Wembley, but it's usually once a week I'm doing deadlift and a lot of accessories for deadlift. For now, I'm still using stiff bar without suit, only built the straps. But now I bought bar, I should come today or tomorrow at last. Ohio deadlift row bar, so I will put this from next training. And I think next week or week after, I will wear suit. Okay. Yeah. How often? Perhaps every second week or maybe okay. even every week. I don't know. I will, I will need to check with my coach. <laughs> And when it comes to straps, you're always using the, uh, the the eight strap? Not always, but end of training, when it's top sets, I put them in work. Yeah. I usually start without straps, then I later I use the normal straps. Yeah. Like benefits for uh, using, you know, every set, when I'm done with set, and la later set is, is going to be heavier, but I know, okay, I have some, some benefit for next one. You know, so I'm using the eight-figure straps for You're my top sets. saving some small Always things something. as as an extra turbo yes, yes, yes. the next set. Yes, like eight-figure straps or mouthpiece or ammoniac or something, or music or something. Yeah. Always something, you know. Do you have a special song that you want to listen to when you? I have some Bosnian songs, but from Swedish, I like this Sabaton. Sabaton. Yes, Carolus Rex, you know. Yes. This is intro for Giants Live Sweden and when yeah. I was there, you know, I was, oh, what is this, I want yeah, to compete here. favorite song. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so that's what. Yeah. When you, when you, uh, when you do a deadlift, could you describe your, your thoughts on, on uh, from before you go up to the bar and when you reach the bar and from the whole movement up and down, can you describe yeah, yeah. what goes through your mind? I actually don't, in my head, deadlift is not pulling event. A lot of people say how much you can pull, you know. It's, for me, when you say pull, it, it, it reminds me of something slow. Yeah. So for me, when I set my legs, you know, I'm pushing down to floor, and I always think deadlift is pressing event. I need to press something, you know, very aggressively, so you know, press. So I think, actually, I don't need to lift something up. I just think I need to push my legs down to floor. So this is my thought. It's a little bit opposite than maybe other people were thinking, you know. You, you press your legs through the floor. Yes, and also pushing my abs to belt. And then I have, you know, I'm squeezing like this bar as much as I can, you know, and then I feel some like fire 
coming out of my heart from chest, through shoulders go down to from my arms, and I feel this when, when I feel that like fire and energy. Finally, in my fingers, it's a moment to pull, and then I everything on the place, very stiff body core, press down with my feet in the in the floor, and that there's a moment to pull. And I have to say, when I since I start to work with Matthias Belshak, he's my coach. It's now over one year. I never fail. Yeah. I never fail. You're so confident. Uh, and also, he's very smart how to put for me everything, you know. I, I don't remember when I fail. What's the heaviest weight he's got in plans for you before Wembley? I said 442 reps, two sets. Then he said to me, we will see. Maybe this is a little bit too high. Be because I know from experience he wants me to pull two reps with 20 kilograms less what I aim for. So 440, it should not be too much. <laughs> because you aim for 460. Uh, it's like this. I, last last week they sent us a setup of the weights. So it's going to be open weight 400, 420, 440, 455, 470, and then world record. So I want to make sure I have in pocket 455. Yeah. And then if some 470 will be, of course, more than amazing. But 455, if I pull, I will enter in that famous club of thousand pounds. Yeah. I will be fifth guy ever who pulled it. Yeah. Will you skip any of the weights? Or will no. you go through all of them? Yeah, I will go all the weights. Yeah. Uh, a, a, a typical warm-up session before 400, what would that be behind the stage? It, 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 it's going to be 70, maybe just for three, four reps. I don't do any more reps. Yeah. Basically, just after 170 or 120, I do just one reps. Singles. Just one, just singles, yes. So it's gonna be two plays, 120, maybe two reps, 170, max two reps, and then I will go just uh, 220, one rep, and then again, I think 270, one rep row, or maybe I put sweet there, or maybe 320 is gonna be my first with sweet. One rep, 370, sweet, one rep, and then I go out on the stage. I start with 400. What weight do you put the belt on? You have two belts. I put belt actually pretty early, but as, as you know, I have two belts. I first put this soft yeah. neoprene band belt, then I put this red band over, and after that I put my third belt. Yeah, you have third. <laughs> yes, and then when it's like serious weight, I put this SBD belt. I will go on Wembley, of course, with first weight with the belt, you know. With four, because 400 is open weight. Yeah. I will go. I will go out full armed. Yeah. yeah, and make sure everything going according to plan. Do you expect you you be talking with your coach, of course? Yeah. Uh, do you expect everyone in the field to make 400? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I think Kirishkovsky is, you know, is one of the greatest strongmen today. But deadlift actually is not his. No. His win, but I think now with sweet he have. As I remember, I'm not sure. Okay. He can be maybe yes or no, but I think all others yes. Okay. Because lineup is scary, you know. Yeah. Everybody's it's best strongman today. Yeah. In one place. Who would you say is the favorite for winning? To winning the show or that lift? That lift. <clears throat> I would say Konstantin Janasia, the Georgian guy. The Georgian goal. Yeah. Beast. He's a beast. Uh, Brian Shaw is, I think, he's not full recovery. Oh. Recovered. His hamstring injury. Benedict Magnusson also, of course, we all know who is he. But he also suffered from some injuries, so I'm checking his videos every day on Instagram. And he's still doing some, like... Uh, rehab. Rehab trainings, yes, some hamstring and so on. I'm not sure if if he can come 100%, I would say Konstantin. Do you think he will, uh, how, how high is he going, going to reach, you think? 500? I don't, think, I don't think nobody will reach. Nobody? Not this year. But in two years I'm going to be best, I think. Of course. From, from this day, I think, uh, two, day, two years, so 2021, I think I will pull top five of them. Is 470 enough to win? 
I think it, it's going to be. Yeah. I think Jerry Pritchett, I forget to say, sorry. Yeah. But he's also a little bit, I'm not sure if he's going to be 100% injury free. Huh. I, I would still stay to Constantin as a main yeah. favorite, in my eyes. Yeah. Yeah, but Jerry, pff, Ramon Heinle also. He just pulled 430 easy on unknown classic South Africa. As I said, you know, it's a scary lineup. It's hard to say, you know, <laughs> it's hard to say. I think everybody will do 420 like speed rep, you know. <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah. If we look a bit further on the season, if you look past when we past the the deadlift competition, we have uh, uh, the Swedish strongman violence. Yeah. You've you've done one one qualifying event so far, and you aim to do one more in order. Yes. Yes. To qualify for the for the finals. For the finals, yes. This year is kind of special because. Uh, we, we expect Johannes not going to be there, uh, perhaps not Martin. Yeah. Um, we don't know about uh, Ula. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people that perhaps are not showing up. Who do you think is a favorite to winning this year? It's going to be Vore for top five. Yeah. It's going to be Vore. Yeah. It's, you know, Frederick Johansson, his job full of, you know, he just win competition and yeah. he's confident, I think it's up to Sky. He, he look very big and lean, so he's a great fall. Yoni Hanson, Andrea Stolberi, Torbjorn Persson, Johannes Ben Kruna, myself. Oof. It's right. going to be war. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you know, every, when Johannes used to compete, it was like Johannes will win, you know. Yeah. Everybody thought this, but now it's just scary. Every, everybody, it's almost now in, in this qualification in Ostersund, between first and fifth place, just eight points. This is like 1.5, 1.5 point between all guys in top five. I think that's gonna be situation in finals also. I forget to say Mar uh, Marcus Ingvenson. Yeah. This kid is just crazy. You know? Yes, he's, a, he's, he's a so hard worker. You know, he needs to get a little bit stronger statically, but of course he's very young. He will do that. He's very big, tall. Dedicated guy. He's a very nice guy. Well. Very nice guy, my good friend. He's very dangerous also. Very dangerous. Yes, dangerous guy. It's going to be really exciting. Yeah. We have a lot to look forward to. Yes. My friend, thanks for having us here and uh, good luck on Wembley. Thank you very much. I will try to make two countries proud. Yeah. My homeland, Bosnia and Sweden. I make result here. I'm very grateful to this country and to people. So I will try to come back happy and make you guys happy. Great, thank you. Thank you.